Hello dear viewers, welcome to the part 3 of the lecture series on weldability and building metallurgy of chromoly steels. Well, in this uh, lecture we are going to discuss about the development of uh, 9 to 12 chrome creep resisting steel. You know this, there are grades like 9 chrome 1 moly and 12 chrome moly vanadium and they have been subsequently modified to 9 chrome 1 moly steel that is P91 and the tungsten alloy 9 chrome steel E911 and P92 and they have been used in full scale in new power plants in Japan and Europe because their steam conditions up to 30 mega Pascal at 600 degrees Celsius so you could understand that the the their uh, minor composition has brought to the uh, double of this uh, creep resisting at 100,000 hours rupture strength at 600 degrees Celsius so this uh, 9 to 12 percentage chromium ferretic creep resisting steels are uh, become an attractive candidate material for using steel power plant applications in thick section boiler components stiff lines streamlines turbine rotors and turbine casings so there is a property comparison of uh, sorry there is a composition uh, comparison between 12 chrome moly vanadium steel p91 p92 and e91 steel the tungsten alloyed steel okay so you would see that uh, most of the time carbon silicon manganese chromium molybdenum they have started but tungsten is uh, found with p92 and e911 material and with uh, Niobium, nitrogen, and boron, they have been uh, added to P91, P92, E991. And here the oxygenization temperature, tempering temperature, and uh, 10 raised to 5 hours creep means 100,000 hours creep rupture strength is also mentioned at 600 degrees Celsius. So you could see this the highest is with the P92 that reported it is. Uh, 123 mega Pascal at 600 degrees Celsius at 100,000 hour this is a creep rupture strain next is the for E91 material then for P91 material it is 94 mega Pascal and for 12 crop moly vanadium steel it is 59 mega Pascal now about welding of creep enhanced ferretic steel CFES steel P91 and P92 they have twice the creep strength of conventional 9 chrome moly steel so welding is not considered difficult provided proper procedures are followed and filler material is selected so uh, first is the thumb rule is to selection of uh, and use of the low hydrogen level consumables for SMAW and H5 level for FCAW and SAW H4 levels means uh, 4 milliliter uh, hydrogen dissolved per 100 gram of well metal for SMAW consumable and H5 level means uh, 5 milliliter hydrogen dissolved in 100 gram of well deposits for FCAW and SAW these are the flux based processes uh, and then shielded metal arc welding processes now regarding the filler there is a important about uh, composition is that manganese and nickel summation of manganese and nickel should be less than 1.5 percentage and then manganese to sulfur ratio should be greater than 50 and there is also close control on the carbon percentage that uh, 0 0.09 and niobium 0.03 and nitrogen 0.02 and impurities so when one meets with this all uh, consumable uh, proper uh, chemistry of the consumable and this uh, and the low hydrogen uh, consumable then uh, of course with uh, preheat and post well heated weight parameter the welding of uh, newer CFES, CFS P91 grip enhanced ferretic stainless steels is not a challenge but uh, 
the important part is that these well joints cool to 80 to 100 degrees Celsius below the martensitic finish temperature of 120 degrees Celsius. So here the martensitic finish temperature 120 degrees Celsius below which uh, less than uh, below 120 degrees Celsius further it should be cooled down to 100 and 100 degrees Celsius because that is uh, it is because we need complete martensitic transformation in well and heat affected zone because when you go for the post well heat treatment these uh, martensite will be become tempered martensite so in order to uh, have the fully tempered martensitic structure it is necessary that the first 100 percent martensite should be developed and that can be ensured that this uh, uh, well joints should cool to 100 to uh, 80 to 100 degrees Celsius below the martensitic finish temperature. So this table give the some welding practice for P91, P92 steels. So in the left column there are some variables and right there are commonly applied variants on range. So welding process is like all GTW including their variants like narrow gap and hot wire and uh, shielded metal arc welding these are sh uh, flux core arc welding and submerged arc welding and their combination all welding process are applicable to this grade but the pre temperature for gtw process ranging 100 to 150 degrees celsius and for other processes it is minimum 200 degrees celsius interpass temperature maximum 300 to 350 degrees celsius post heating is recommended 200 degrees Celsius for four hours. It is not required for thick section less than 50 mm. Thick section with H4 and H5 consumables and weld cold slowly to not below 80 degrees Celsius. So because if they cool slowly to below this temperature, uh, there is always risk of uh, martensite formation. And you can understand this uh, hydrogen can get easily diffused into the martensitic structure can give problem like hydrogen embrittlement so cooling before possible heat treatment so as we have just discussed that uh, below the martensitic finish the well should cool below 80 to 100 degrees celsius below their martensitic finish temperature and post well heat treatment is performed for P91 material is between 745 to 775 degrees Celsius and for P92 it is 750 to 770 degrees Celsius and post well heat treatment duration for GTW process if the welds are produced with uh, uh, GTW then it is 2 hours for SIW 2 to 4 hours and FCL SIW it is 4 hours so this all depends on the uh, the amount of heat input that these processes are uh, uh, deliberating into the weld metal and accordingly the post well heat treatment time is uh, decided or duration decided and this uh, is to be gas based back purging uh, using the argon gas so here is a very important guideline regarding the uh, selection of the post well heat treatment, correct post well heat treatment. So because the, uh, the composition uh, in a well metal composition nickel and manganese if they are uh, they are going to lower the lower critical temperature. So this uh, diagram, uh, lower critical temperature, SE1 temperature in degrees Celsius versus nickel plus manganese is weight percentage. So, so you would see that this, uh, if the nickel plus manganese percentage are uh, between 1.5 to 1 percentage, right? Their uh, lower critical temperature selection should be uh, from the 732 to uh, 800. Uh, somewhere here that is 